Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. And you got here just in time. Not sure exactly for what, but you got here just in time. I have finally, I finally have a day where I can come outside and the wind is not gonna blow the camera out of my hand. Uh, and I've got good light. So the last several days, I've been wanting to break out the camera and show you what I'm doing, but Mother Nature was not being kind to us. So this, to, this video is all about rock lights on a motor home. That's right, rock lights on a motor home. Who'd have thought? I never, never even knew what rock lights were. But there have been a couple of times where, now, I t now typically I don't drive the motor home, I, you know, in the dark. I had to leave camp early. I was leaving camp early because I had to be somewhere early. And those three times were for service work on the coach. I had to be at, at the repair facility first first light, literally seven o'clock. So I'm rolling out of camp while it's still dark. And on all three occasions, I, I was, it was very challenging. I was really surprised at how difficult it was navigating the, these three different campgrounds in the dark. Uh, just, it's just a whole different driving environment. Uh, so I decided to do something about it. And, and then there's the, when we take the RV to storage, we've got a big storage facility where we park the coach. It's covered on all sides except the front. And when I go to back in this time of year, I cannot see inside where I'm backing it's just a it's just dark and i don't want to hit my neighbor's rv or run into the back wall so i decided to install some lighting take advantage of those upfitter switch you have to bear it pardon my neighbors are having a, a a shop built and so you're going to hear the the guys over there making lots of noise trudy thunder is built on the ford chassis and the ford super duty chassis comes with upfitter switches well let's go take a look at those there's the building going up he's actually got a great big boat that's going in there he's got a a big go fast boat so in in the the super duty these are upfitter switches the what and what that means is there's already so there, these switches are connected to the electrical system already there's relays and fuses already in place in the engine compartment these are 40 amp these are 20 amp i've already allocated one for the compressor that's actually the last one number six is the compressor number one is the air truck horn number two is the air train horn so three and four are now new lighting circuits and we'll go look at the upfitter connections because this you may if you have a super duty truck you may want to know if you have a a big super duty chassis motor home this is good to know so right here this box, those are the fuses and relays for your upfitter switches. And just below that, and I had to just pop this out, there's a couple of little quick disconnect tabs and you can move it. You can pop that loose and move it around to get to these this wiring bundle back here. That's the wiring bundle. Hold on, I'll show you. I'm gonna help you out because I had to go Research and find this information. So here, you can, you can pause this and, and jot that down or take a screenshot of it. So there's your switch number and wire color. And then there's also some blunt cut circuit. There's a run start. And if you want to just connect to the battery hot, that's a good place. There's a PTO relay 
and there's two PTO relays. I don't have a PTO, so I don't need don't need to worry about that. So I've connected switches three and four to a new lighting circuit. And the first one, and granted, I'm gonna have to show you some footage in the dark. But for now, I'm gonna point out where these these new light new lights are located. So I've installed four on the, the hitch basket, two pointing back and two to the side. So that should, in addition to that, I forgot there was one other thing. Now, if you go back in time on in YouTube time, I did a video about brake light on the F-150 that I pulled. I actually installed an LED brake light strip on the the rack as well as on the truck and that that thing is super bright we really like having that on the rack but this one also includes white leds that can be connected to the back of the lights so i made that connection and i've i've put a disconnect and it's all underneath the coach it was too windy and the lighting was horrible when I was doing it. Otherwise, I would have done it for you. So now when we put the Trudy in reverse, we get a row of white LEDs there. If that's not enough, switch number three turns on these four lights. So I should, should not have any issues backing into our storage facility. Or if for some reason we're running way behind and we're having to back into a campsite in the dark i can now light it up with more than just the backup lights now to address navigating narrow campground roads and avoiding ditches while driving a large motor coach early in the morning I, I was really surprised at how difficult that was because i'm i've been driving big vehicles my whole life and part of that was uh, hauling soda pop at night <laughs> so driving big rigs in the at night is is nothing new to me but the pure the the darkness of these two different one was a state park and one was a of a forest service campground both of those locations were so dark i could not tell where the ditches were when i'm making my turns and i, I couldn't tell where the rear of my coach was as i'm making because you gotta allow for your tail swing and and i really there's no there's no there's only one marker light here and it does nothing to tell you where this is because you can't really see that from your mirror. So I need more light. And I thought, well, you know, I just need to, I need to mount some lights that light up the side here. And I've seen our, I've seen coaches where they put LED strips along the, the undercarriage. And that, I really didn't feel that that was going to give me enough light out here. That's more of a, an aesthetic, you know, it looks cool kind of thing. What I needed was something to show, some way to look out in the, to look in the rear view mirror and see where my rear tire was in relation to a culvert. And kind of where's my ditch, you know, look out the window here, where's my ditch? on both sides so i needed i needed some rock lights or and, and even rock lights is not i needed spotlights floodlights to go out here the ideal situation would have been to have them mounted up high but that would require me punching holes in the in the rv wall and we're not going to do that so i defaulted or didn't I didn't default I decided to go low hold on now we're going low so what I did I 
to take advantage of the holes in the side of my hydraulic leveling system. And there's, and I'll, I'll get a creeper and I'll roll under there and show you how I mounted that. But basically I put some angled channel, angled iron, perforated angle iron under there and mounted lights to each one of the hydraulic jacks. Those are a little, the rears are a little farther under the coach than the front ones. So the front ones are here. And as you can see, I have a light right beside the jack pad. And the, and the thinking is, and the thought is that being behind the jack pad should protect it from any debris thrown up by the tires while I'm rolling down the highway and, and protect it in the event that I'm dropping off a, into a hole or something. The jack should protect that. Now the rear ones are in front of the jacks for a reason. Let me grab a creeper. I am on the creeper and I am under the coach. So here is how the lights are mounted on all four jacks. I use the two conductor 12 gauge wire. You'll notice that I have a little, little extra hanging out there. Uh, that's a project. That's another project where I'm working on. But that's how you put the rock lights on your hydraulic leveling system. That's how I put rock lights on a motorhome. It's about as dark as it's going to get here. Let's see how bright these lights really are. We'll do the backup lights on the basket first, and then I'll reset the camera. So as you can see, of course you can't see, it's freaking dark. We're walking beside the coach, so there's the coach. So I'm gonna turn off the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off the selfie light, put you in complete darkness. So you can truly appreciate how bright these lights really are. So you are currently pointed directly at the coach. Ignore the dog barking. Yeah, that works pretty good. So you can only see the two. There's actually, ignore the dog. There's another. All right, so the, the important thing is how much we can see behind the coach. Ignore the dog. There we go. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on uh, the rock lights. And I'm going to set you up here. So I'm, I'm going to actually, I'm actually going to turn off the rear lights and then turn, and then turn on the rock lights.
the, the visitor dog. That, that dog doesn't live in this neighborhood. He's just visiting. Not as super bright as I was hoping for, but it's, it's definitely more than I had. Looks like I need need a little more light between the wheels. All right, I'll, I'll cut back in tomorrow when I got some more light. Rock lights on the motorhome. I lost my footage. So here I am editing a month later and I can't find my ending. But that gives me the opportunity to give you an overview, a review, a recap. Because I've used those, those rock lights two times now. Uh, with take, when taking the coach to have, have service work done. And I found those rock lights to be most beneficial. Although I think the term rock lights for the motorhome are really not appropriate. It ought to be more like ditch lights or uh, jack lights. I don't know what we're going to call them. Undercarriage lighting. Works great. Um, uh, I feel that it was well worth the time and effort to, to do that. Uh, the lights I bought in a uh, package on Amazon. I am an Amazon affiliate and I'll put the, the link, of course, I'll put it right up there and one down there. If you click on that and you make a purchase, I do earn a little bit of money. Thank you for that opportunity. Uh, but the, I think the lights are a good investment. Probably not so much necessary if I'm running with, if Yappy's with me, but when I'm, when I'm running solo, it really made a difference on two different occasions and getting in and out of our parking spot at the storage definitely made that better. It didn't completely eliminate. The problem is the sun sits right up above. <laughs> so, so when I look in the mirror, I got nothing but glare from the sun. Anyway, I, I'm rambling. None of that matters to you. What matters to you is that Actually, they work out those those lights. The rock lights on the motorhome work out really good. Hey, if this is your first visit to Dude RV and you found this to be informative, entertaining, and, and worth watching, please click on that thumbs up and share me on your social media. That, that really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you've not already, I'd be honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button for those of you who have been following along, thank you. I wouldn't be here. How long have I been doing? I've been doing this since 2012. I wouldn't have been here this long if it wasn't for y'all. Thank you so much for that. And for my patrons, you rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear? And in case you're wondering, the air horn works great.